It's the end of a challenge. You've went all in, you went all out, you followed your nutrients, you've eaten all your calories, you've done a massive amounts of workouts, and now you come to the photo day, you jump on the scale to find out, yes, you lost weight, but then the scale's reading that you lost muscle and you also gained fat. The question today is, why did this happen, coach? Now, before we go on, guys, give the video a like and make sure that you subscribe. I want to continue to grow this channel. I'm putting out content every single day that are complete bangers designed especially for you. So the more love you give to me, the more love that I'm going to give to you. So when it comes to the scale, especially the arm around in-body scales, is the first thing that you have to understand is that when you're starting a challenge and maybe this is your first or even your second and you've only been working out consistently maybe for under a year, you have to understand that your body is in a transformation phase, okay? It's like a cocoon that a butterfly is sitting inside of and it's waiting to be released. When you look at the cocoon, you're like, yuck, gross. Like it's in a transformation phase and so are you. And as you're transforming, your body's gonna constantly be making adjustments. Sometimes it could be making you lose weight. Sometimes it could be making you lose muscle. And sometimes it could be making you actually gain fat. And you're like, well, what the hell? right? And the thing that we have to understand is that we need to look at this at a longer term, okay? So instead of looking at it as from challenge to challenge, so belly burn one for you to belly burn two to belly burn three, look at it as like year one versus year two, year two versus year five. And you're going to see that there's going to be a consistent change as long as you are consistently doing the right things. And so how do you consistently do the right things? Well, number one is that you need to be on your nutrition 365 days of the year. And you're like, Coach RJ, that's impossible. Okay. I can't stay focused 100% of the time. But here's the thing. Then your numbers are going to constantly be fluctuating. So you might gain some weight. You might lose some weight. You might gain some muscle. You might lose some muscle. And so as such, you're never going to get a consistent reading. Now in the challenge, you've upped your intensity of workouts, you've upped your movement. So naturally you're burning more calories and your body actually might just want to lose some water because it's saying that this excess water that I'm holding from all the carbs that this person ate prior to the challenge is now I want to get rid of it because carbs require more calories and more water than any other macro, especially when it comes to high fiber. And so your body is going to get rid of the excess weight that it doesn't want to have based on the types of movement that you're doing. So the number one recommendation is that you got to look at this over a consistent amount of time and understand that you are what you consistently do. Now, when it comes to the scale, my analogy on it is that the scale is reading a smaller person. So you might have lost weight but now you might have not changed your muscle mass or you might have not have changed your fat percentage, but you might have just changed the overall circumference of the surface area. So when you go to the Omron scale and you're standing there and you're plugging your numbers in, so age, height, gender, right? You enter all those informations in, they've stayed consistent. It's not like you've gotten taller. It's not like you've gotten shorter. You may have gotten older, but you want to try and use the same number over and over and you, you might have not switched genders. So it's going to read the same container, but now it's reading a smaller container with the same amount of content in it. So if I shrink my house and I have all the same furniture in my house, it's going to seem like there's more furniture in my smaller house. The same thing the scales reading. So now you've gotten a lot smaller, but yet your fat and muscle have stayed the same. So it's conducting through a smaller surface area, reading the same amount, but in a smaller surface area. So it thinks that, hey, this person must have lost some muscle and they must have gained fat. And so you have to understand that the scale gets a little bit tricky. So my recommendation and for this video purpose only is that you need to look at what are you doing consistently over a long term. And so for me, when I work with my belly burn clients, I always send out a copy of a sheet where you have eight challenges in there because I don't want you looking at day one versus day 28. And that's why I have a lot of people that have done like 10 challenges with me, right? And if we look at the challenges over the course of period of time, then we'll see that they've started up here 
and then each number, especially when it comes to fat and weight, has gotten down here by the eighth one. But by the eighth one, this would have been 12 months later. And so they've consistently gone down, but it's only going down by 1%. And so my recommendation to you is to stay consistent with what you're doing, continue to do the right things, and put everything into a realistic goal based on your lifestyle. Don't be too hard on yourself, but be hard on yourself to maintain at least one of the couple elements that are key for you to see your weight go down and to see your muscle go up. So the main thing, if you have to stop and just do one thing, and the three concepts of the belly burn is your workouts, your nutrition, and then supplementation for some of you. So if you're done taking supplements, that's one element that you removed. If you're no longer tracking your food and having somebody look over and you're, you're cutting calories, that's another element that's gonna help with your success. But the main one that you can never stop doing is working out. You need to consistently work out because you haven't stopped eating. And in fact, if you're probably not working out and it's the summertime, you're probably eating more calories than you're burning. Now, eat more calories than you're burning and then you eliminate the workouts that deficit becomes a lot bigger. So if you're working out and here's where you, when you're, where you eat in a belly burn challenge, you're eating under what you're burning. And then all of a sudden you, you know, you're done with the belly burn challenge. You level out. Now there's not a be another belly burn challenge until September. And you're like, well, it's summertime. I got potlucks and barbecues and you know, we drink on the weekends, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that number scales up way too easy. And then you're like, well, you know, I'm only gonna be able to make it three times a week and I've got this trip coming up, so I better put my membership on hold for a couple months. <laughs> you know what I mean? So imagine what's gonna happen to your fat, imagine what's gonna happen to your muscle, and imagine what's gonna happen to your weight. So stay consistent, guys. Then that scale, it's gonna read what you want it to read and you're gonna be a happy camper forever.